Journey with us again as we explore the world around us. This time we visit the Vatican to discover one of its secrets. From there, we cross to Africa to witness a million or more wildebeests take their journey. From the heat of Africa, we then visit some hot spas. We conclude this episode with a special tour of Germany. Romans lovingly call the ancient passageway that links the Vatican to the medieval fortress of Castel Sant'Angelo the Passetto, which means small corridor. But since its construction in 1277, this Vatican corridor has only been seen from the ground. Following a long period of reconstruction work, now for the first time in hundreds of years, the corridor has finally been reopened to allow people to walk through almost the entire 800 meter length. The Vatican corridor was conceived in medieval times to provide a fortified raised escape route for popes and church hierarchy. It was also used as a strategic surveillance point to monitor activities around the Vatican. People could travel along the passageway unobserved by those down below in the street. When first constructed, the passageway would have been higher than surrounding buildings. Houses often several floors taller have now been constructed close by and everyday life carries on around the ancient escape route. The arches of the passageway weave through parts of central Rome and residents consider it as very much part of their city. But it is interesting to note that the Vatican is actually a state of its own. In fact, it is the world's smallest city-state. The two ends of the corridor nowadays are situated in two different countries. This gate marks the border and is the property of the Italian state. After the gate, it becomes the property of the Vatican State. It's only a small stretch of corridor, but from a historical rather than physical viewpoint, it's very long indeed. And it reflects the long and often complex relationship between the Vatican and Rome. The sense of history can certainly be felt and it is not difficult to imagine popes scuttling along the battlements. During the sack of Rome in 1527, Clement VII had run down the passageway and taken refuge with 3,000 Romans in the fortress. Hundreds of Romans and tourists alike now queue on a daily basis to take a walk along the passageway. It has become a real hit, as it is also open in the evening, allowing people to avoid the high temperatures experienced during the day. This is another magnificent dawn in Kenya. The light is sweeping the seemingly endless plains of Kenya's Masai Mara district. Due to its natural beauty, the tree-dotted Mara is usually one of East Africa's most popular tourist destinations. But at this time of year, it's the spectacle of over 1.4 million wildebeest, accompanied by hundreds of thousands of zebras, that has brought tourists and wildlife enthusiasts flocking here. The herds are visiting from the Serengeti in Tanzania, the starting point from which they migrate in a clockwise fashion for almost 2,000 miles every year in search of rain-ripened grass. But in reality, there is no real beginning or end to a wildebeest's journey. Its life is an endless pilgrimage, a constant search for food and water. It's not an easy life as many don't make it. River crossings are dangerous enough. However, crocodiles add to the hazard. Then there is the further dilemma of trying to outsmart the big cats that like the tourists, like to follow the pilgrimage.
Anyone keen on seeing the creatures in action must pack a generous portion of patience along with their binoculars. Kenya's wildlife reserves and beaches assist in the employment of 50,000 people and contribute a great deal to the entire economy. But it is the wildebeest migration that is the real attraction. This is the time when tourists are most likely to see the largest amount of African species in one visit. There are many very comfortable hotels in the Mara Game Park, which are fully occupied during the migration period. So if you wish to see this wonderful natural event, then booking in advance is a must. These plains are the home of the Maasai people of Kenya. They have shared the plains with all the animals for as long as time itself and led their cattle on the plains of the Mara for countless generations. Even centuries ago, the arrival of the wildebeest was good news. Over the years, many things have changed in the Mara and for the Maasai. The coming of the wildebeest is still good news for the Maasai warriors, who make a bit of extra money entertaining tourists keen on learning more about their culture. So if you're keen to get off the beaten track and wish to see the real Africa, its wildlife and culture, then be sure to look into the Wildebeest Migration Safari. Are you tired of a traditional sales pitch of paprika, gypsy music, great architecture, great European food to entice you to visit Hungary? Hungary is promoting its natural resources, some 1,300 hot springs, to cater for Europe's ageing population. Every day, thousands of people enjoy thermal baths in Sejini Pool, Europe's largest health spa. Housed in a neo-baroque building and looking more like a cathedral than a bathhouse, this bath, built almost 100 years ago, on one of several natural springs under the capital, now offers a variety of water therapies. It is also famous for the chessboards provided for bathers in the water. For Hungarians, taking the waters is part of their culture. The country, sitting in the Carpathian Basin, is blessed with thermal springs which gush millions of litres of hot, mineral-rich waters from deep underground almost everywhere you go. No wonder, bathing tradition is long and rich and dates back to Roman times. Roman soldiers with rheumatism were sent to Budapest for therapy. The water is rich in calcium, sulphur, chloride and a host of trace elements which, when absorbed by the body, help soothe and cure ailments from aching joints and bad backs to skin and muscle complaints and respiratory problems. The clear sulfurous water, which at source smells strongly of rotten eggs, is said to be up to 20,000 years old. The small open air facility is open 24 hours a day, all year round, and attracts hardy bathers at night time and in winter. Many of Hungary's larger spas, like Heviz, the southern Hungarian spa resort and home to Europe's largest hot water natural lake, have modern techniques and therapies, 
offering a range of state-of-the-art health products from dentistry and laser eye surgery to fitness gyms, massage, mud packs and plastic surgery. Hervis is unique in the world with its 47,000 square metres, its mud and its huge collection of phytoestrogen. The visitors are mainly German and Austrian tourists who on average stay two or three weeks. To entice travellers, a large development program was initiated and $155 million was spent on promoting health tourism. Another $450 million was spent to subsidise the country's 82 spas and eight spa hotels in Hungary. The new $10 million thermal theme park opened in the eastern city of Debrecen earlier this year. Bathers can be seen chatting in hot tubs as plumes of steam rise into the crisp October evening air. Makeshift showers were put up by locals and they have thoughtfully added a smaller pool nearby for naturists. Although it may appear that this is just for people looking to relieve some aches and pains, the truth is many tourists are happy just to take part in a tradition and play in the warmth of the spa's waters. So still visit Hungary for the gypsy music, paprika, architecture and all the other great cultural aspects. But perhaps you should include a spa tour in your itinerary. While in Germany, if there isn't already too much to see, be sure to take the children to the Munich Penguin Waddle. This didn't start by officials creating an entertainment agenda for tourists. It was all started by accident one day. The penguins escaped from their pen and simply went for a walk. The zoo, which is one of the world's first natural enclosure parks, is always a great place to visit. Many children get their first glimpse of the world's most majestic and rare wild animals at such venues. From bird life, such as these beautiful flamingos, which preen and frolic and enjoy life in the comfort of their specially designed environment. <laughs> to everybody's favorite, the big cats. But unruffled by hundreds of spectators, rhinoceros, flamingos and feline predators, six penguins from the Munich Zoo insist on strolling out of their protective glass enclosure and across the zoo in what has become their annual tradition. The Munich Penguin Waddle has now been happening for 25 years. Officials at the zoo say the Penguin Waddle is not a tourist promotion, but a penguin-initiated project. It's only secondary that the zoo visitors take the walk too. The six king penguins participating on this walk, which occurs in January of each year, calmly strolled through crowds and past dozens of curious children to reach their Everest, a modest pile of snow a few hundred metres outside of their cage.
They will repeat this penguin peregrination every day until warm weather arrives. It seems it's the penguin's own way of answering the call of nature. The penguin waddle is only conducted during the colder months, as it would be extremely uncomfortable or indeed dangerous for penguins to attempt their walk in summer. So if you are planning a trip to Germany, try to be there in the winter months to let the children walk with the penguins. It's just another great reason to visit Deutschland. <laughs> Travelling northward along the romantic roads, you pass small villages and towns. Ever wish you could travel back in time and explore a town untouched by modern events? Look no further than Rothenburg. Having prospered from trade during the 11th century, the town commissioned one of Germany's finest carvings, the Altar of the Twelve Apostles, housed in St. Jacob's Church. In Germany, there is always the scenic route to take, but almost everybody wants to enjoy the experience driving on the Autobahn just once. If this is your impression of a no-speed limit highway, you'll be relieved to know that German roads and drivers are among the world's best. Once you have reached your destination, you will see amusing signs on posts and storefronts which will guide you around town. The inspiration of many a romantic verse, Heidelberg, entices visitors from around the world. Nestled in the valley of the Neckar River, the 16th century hilltop castle dominates the landscape. Germany's first university was built here in 1386. Still standing as a shrine is the student's prison. Playing practical jokes or exhibiting ungentlemanly behaviour could have earned students time here. Heidelberg's market squares and pedestrian zones make it a city like so many others in Germany that you will want to explore on foot. One of the most exciting times to visit Heidelberg is on the first Sunday in June and September for the spectacular fireworks display. Leaving behind the bright lights of the city, tourists and natives alike often head for the Baden-Baden. Well known as a playground for rich and famous, spa-goers are attracted to the town's casino, often considered as the most beautiful in the world. Surrounding this famous resort is the well-known Black Forest, where Mother Nature displays her majestic beauty. In less than a day by car from the Black Forest, you can have the wind at your back and a spectacular view of Hamburg's Ulster Lake at your command. Surrounded by water, Hamburg has more bridges than Venice and more navigatable waterways than Amsterdam. For hundreds of years, the city's government has protected the swans populating the lake. Hamburg once took this duty so seriously that anyone making fun of these graceful creatures could be fined or thrown in jail. Hamburg's acceptance in the Hanseatic League in medieval times nurtured a powerful trading industry and today is one of Europe's most busiest ports. The Rapavan, or Rope Walk, was once famous for its finest ship riggings made here.
more recently called by some the most wicked mile. It's now infamous for its saucy nightlife. After a Saturday night on the town, many locals and visitors visit the fish market as early as 6am. To the uninitiated, the marketplace is an assortment of sights and sounds. But if you listen closely, this concoction of confusion is actually a symphony of salesmanship. Throughout Germany, you will find the shopping outstanding. In Hamburg, it's spectacular. Join Latitudes again when we next trek the globe and explore fabulous and exciting holiday destinations. For further information regarding any story on this episode, log on to www.pbtv.com.au. This program is proudly supported by Pata and Always Dive Australia.